this is Audio Bird, and I've got another PVC speaker I want to show you today and show you how quick you can build this one. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, and I suggest you download them and take a look at them before you do this project, because I'm not go going to go into all the details of cutting the pipe and so forth that I explain in the other ones. The same techniques you can use on this project. Now, this particular uh, speaker is a bipole speaker. It has two speakers mounted in this T-chamber at the top here, as you can see. The pipe is 37 and a half inches long and it's tied into our typical base we use on these which is a uh, closet flange or toilet flange, floor flange on a 10 inch diameter piece of plywood. Now you notice I've got a little collar here in the center. I Actually you can go buy this pipe and 10 foot lengths and cut it to whatever you need. I had some short pieces left over so I decided to save those. I just used this collar so, so I could achieve the full 37 and a half inches I needed for the, for the main collar. Well, now we'll take a look at the pieces that you're going to need for this, and we'll put one together and uh, see what it looks like. All right, let's take a look at the parts we're going to need to build our bipole PVC speaker. First, I mentioned the uh, 37 and a half inch piece of Schedule 40, 4 inch inside diameter pipe. And I've got a piece here that I've, I've actually put together from some other pieces I had around the shop. Uh, you notice I've got some banana plugs here. There are uh, where you connect your speakers and you drill an, uh, about an eighth inch hole and mount them on inside the, uh, the tube. Here the important factor here on this one is you're going to cut a port two by two inches about three inches up from the bottom. Remember that two by two inches. And if you look down inside you can see our banana plug connections. I've already pre-wired this. I've got the wiring all already in. Now the other components you're going to need, the more important one, is this T connector which is available from your home depot or your Menards or whatever you do at Lowe's. Uh, they're not too expensive. I think I paid about three bucks for this one. And this is going to form our chamber at the top where we're going to mount our speakers. Now before we can do that we have to cut some four inch rings. And I've got one here for you. This is actually just a piece of pipe. It's cut about uh, two inches, inch, I think it's an inch and three quarter wide. And they have to go down inside the mouth of these T connectors, at least the two ends, not the big one on the bottom here. That's going to connect to your main pipe. This is so you can mount the closet flanges uh, that are going to be used, here's one right here, to mount the uh, speakers. Here's a typical base, again, made from a uh, four inch closet flange. And I've got this mounted on a piece of three quarter inch or half inch plywood that I've kind of rounded the ends off and painted it black. Here's another shot of the flange that we're going to use mostly on both ends of the speaker. You'll have to cut yourself a piece of uh, plywood, half inch plywood. This is about seven and a half inches in diameter uh, and about uh, a little over four inches across the front. And it will go, be bolted to the top of the flange. And I've got one already done here that you can look at. Notice I've got it tied inside the flange, ready to go. Now what will happen, we're going to put this ring in and we're going to stick this flange in and give you an idea of what, uh, how it goes together. Alright, here's our T-pipe. First thing we're going to do is take our ring, our one, one and three quarter inch wide ring we cut from a piece of four inch pipe. And we're going to mount it, force it down inside the top of the T-pipe. Now you can hammer it down a little longer if you want, but the best way to do it is just do this. And it's in in solidly. So this is now going to hold our speaker baffle that we're going to do. What you will do is the same thing. You'll insert this, turn it upside down, smack it down in there solid. Now the reason we're not doing this right now is because we have to first, you want to do this before you mount the speakers. After you've mounted the speakers. Rather. Now the speaker we're going to use is our little Visaton here. It's the FR10. It's available from uh, mcmelectronics.com. It's a nice little uh, driver. It's a full range driver. You can see it's got a little wizard cone in the center of it. And believe it or not, this thing will produce some pretty good sound. Uh, it has an 80 hertz frequency, uh, low end, up to, uh, they say 20,000, but few people can hear beyond uh, 15. Uh, but it's adequate. It works very nice. On the back of it, I've got some foam uh, insulation that you can buy. It's a small stuff, the 3 8 inch size. And I use this to make a gasket when we, when we attach it to the uh, baffle. Now how this works is 
This will go in here, like that, once you've got some wires attached to it, because uh, you can't get inside of it once you've got it in there to wire it on. That's why you have to put the wires on first. You notice there's not a lot of room inside of that uh, chamber there. And then you'll do the same thing I showed you before. You'll hammer this back down, and voila, you've got your, uh, got your speaker mounted. All right, we're ready to start our assembly of the PVC bi-pole speaker. Here is the base we talked about. See, our closet flange is mounted there. I've already got it mounted on the bottom. And what you do is you take your pipe, about the same way we did when we pounded those rings in. You set it over the top, like this, and it's in. Now, you can elect if you want to. If you want to do that, you can get PVC cement, and you can glue everything in with PVC cement. Put everything together with PVC cement. Of course, once you do that, they're never going to come apart again. Now, I don't do it because I do a lot of experimentation. I take things apart and build different things with it. I've found the press fit works fine. Uh, even holds together when you move them around. They never get loose and they don't leak any air. It affects the uh, sound quality. So, I'd recommend press fit. If you want a more permanent installation that will last until your uh, last days, uh, go ahead and use the PVC cement if that, uh, if that makes you happy. All right, we've got our base installed. We've got our wires run out through the top. The next step, we have to put some stuffing in here, polyester stuffing, because we have to dampen down the harmonics that will be developed in this tube when we have both of these speakers working into it. It's hard to say how much you're going to put in. I would recommend five to six ounces of this polystyrene that you can buy at your local craft store. It's used for pillow stuffing. And I stuff it in starting at the top. Now you don't want it to go all the way to the bottom exactly. You don't want it to you don't want to see it in the port if you can avoid it. You want to keep that port open. But you want to keep stuffing this down into the bottom here about oh I, I go down about three feet, about as far as my arm can reach. And I'll stuff it all the way to the top with uh, with this material. And uh, we'll also put some stuffing in the T pipe before we attach it. And we'll do some listening tests. If you find the sound is either hollow or uh, strange, uh, add some more stuffing to it until it sounds pretty solid and your bass sounds good to you, the, the way you want to want to hear your bass. Now I'm going to I put in here probably about five ounces, six ounces of this stuff. It's hard to uh, uh, determine how many ounces uh, something weighs. I have a postage scale that I put this stuff on on a flat piece of cardboard, which uh, I get a rough approximation of what what they weigh. So we got the stuffing in. The next step is to do some wiring and then put the T-junction uh, on. Right, we're going to wire the speakers and put them into the uh, pipes. I want to caution you about something. You notice I've got two different colored wires. I've got a purple one that I'm using and a gray one. The purple is on the positive side. and If you look down here, you will see that the uh, speaker terminals are marked positive and negative. When you wire these, you want to make sure you put the positive on the positive and the negative on the negative and all the wire colors the same uh, when you join them together. And that way you'll maintain the uh, phase of the speakers. They both have to go in and out at exactly the same time. If you get one going the opposite direction, you're going to get bass cancellation. And we'll show you how you can check that pretty easily uh, towards the end of, of the video. Okay, we're ready to, uh, we're ready to attach our T-pipe. First thing I want you to do, of course, is to take the wiring and feed it up through the pipe like this. Now when you push this down on the top of the uh, master pipe, make sure you orient it so that the one speaker is towards where the port is and the back speaker is towards where the connectors are on the back. That way you have them oriented in the right direction. And just do like we did before. Just stomp it down and it's tight. Now the next thing we're going to do is put our speakers in. Now what I've done here, I have pre-wired the speakers Got some wiring coming out here. I'm going to stick this one in uh, on this side here, like that, and push it in. Now, here's something you can do to make it a little better. Just kind of tap it with a hammer a little bit. Should went pretty solid that way. Now we have our wires coming out the back here. What we're going to do is take uh, the light colored wires and tie them all together and solder them up, maybe put some uh, heat shrink tubing on them to hold them together. And we're going to take our speaker, the other one that we pre-wired here, put it in the uh, pipe the same way, 
But before we do that, we're going to have to add some stuffing. Now, how much stuffing are we going to put in here? Well, a couple of handfuls is kind of a good guess. I just happen to have my handy stuffing bag here. You want to get some of it down inside the throat here a little bit. And then you want to pack it in. Yeah, see, it's down inside the throat like that. And you want to pack it in towards the back of that uh, front speaker we just put in there. Like that. Keep adding until it comes up to just about to the back of uh, where the other one's going to go in. That would be about right right there. You can see it sticking out just a little bit. And you put your speaker in, it'll go right up against it. All right, we're going to put the uh, wire the speaker up, and then we'll uh, put it back together and uh, connect it up, and we'll, we'll play some sound with it. Before we put some audio through our speakers, I wanted to show you how you can test the polarity and how important it is to have the polarity correctly. I've got both of these uh, speakers wired in parallel with some clip leads here. I've got the positive on the positive, the negative on the negative. And I've got a 9-volt battery I've connected up with the positive terminal on the positive terminals on the speaker and the negative likewise. So let's see what happens when I put a positive signal into the positive terminal on these speakers. Can you see them jumping up forward? They're moving forward because they're in proper phase. Now we'll reverse the connection on the speaker and we'll show you what happens if we wire them up out of phase. You ready? See that? Now let's get this out of the way here a little bit. You notice that one's going up, one's going down. They're not in phase. And what will, that will happen to you is that will cancel most of the bass out uh, below uh, three, four hundred hertz. You'll have no, no bass whatsoever that sounds worth a darn if uh, you don't have them properly phased. And I use a 9-volt battery. Uh, you can use a 1.5-volt uh, uh, battery if, you, if it's in, uh, a good one. It's got a lot of voltage in it. But this works out fine. Well, now, let's try the speakers with some audio through it, and at least to show you that they do work and I've got them wired properly. Now, it's almost impossible to tell the quality of the sound when you're doing this uh, on, on a movie camera or camcorder or anything else. You have to hear these in person, but uh, I assure you that the, the bass is fantastic and the uh, upper range is great on these, and I think you will enjoy them. These, are, these would be great in a dorm room, unless you have a uh, physics major for a roommate, he's going to spend the night telling you that they can't possibly work the way they do. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll try building a pair of these bipolar speakers.